continue as we welcome to the stage our second keynote speaker of the day, Minister Rob Yetten, a Dutch politician and Minister for Climate and Energy Policy of the Netherlands, to address the public at the first Caribbean Climate and Energy Conference 2023 in Aruba. Minister Rob Yetten is known for his progressive stance on climate change and the environment. And he is here to share his knowledge and experience on the matter with us today. Let's give him a warm welcome as he takes the stage for this historical event. Welcome to the stage of the first Caribbean Climate and Energy Conference 2023 in Aruba, Minister Rob Yetten. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, it's, it's amazing to have all of us here together today. And uh, this uh, conference is already, for me, a big success to have everyone from the kingdom here at one conference discussing climate and energy policies and see how we can cooperate even better than we've done before. Uh, Prime Minister, Prime Minister, Vice Prime Minister, Ministers, Members of Parliament and Delegates, um, it is great for me to be back in the Caribbean region. Uh, last time I visited the Caribbean region was uh, three years ago. Uh, I was actually on St. Martin when we had the first COVID contamination uh, on St. Martin. So a lot has changed since that uh, pandemic, but I'm really grateful to be uh, back uh, here to meet all these wonderful and nice people and also to especially visit your beautiful and enchanting islands. In my first year as a Minister for Climate and Energy, it has been a privilege to meet some of you uh, back in the Netherlands. And it feels great to be here today at this conference and to discuss with you in the upcoming hours what we can do to improve our climate and energy policies. And as you all know, and the Prime Minister has said it as well, our planet is warming. Sea level is rising. Extreme weather events are becoming more frequent. And this has far-reaching consequences on a global scale, such as floods, forest fires, extreme droughts. It's disastrous for hundreds of millions of people. And the UN Secretary General said it earlier this year, it's the Kingdom of the Netherlands that is in the top five of countries that will be most affected by climate change. People will have to leave their homes and their regions. In other parts of the world, people um, are hungry or even die because of the extreme droughts. And this climate change is also impacting the European part of the Netherlands. In the long term, we are vulnerable because of sea level rising, and we are already confronted by some climate change effects back home, such as increased periods of heavy rainfall, leading to flooding, for example, um, two years ago in Belgium, Germany, and the south of the Netherlands, that impacted thousands of people that have to leave, had to leave their homes. And this could happen more often as extreme weather events become more severe over time. But other consequences are less visible, but also catastrophic. Of all the flora and fauna that are found in the European part of the Netherlands, 15% is left of what we had only 100 years ago. So climate change affects all of us and also affects future generations. It also affects the island states in the Caribbean region and you are well aware of that. Extreme weather conditions, rising sea levels that affect the coastline, and uh, acidification of the oceans, the threats in the beautiful nature, both above and underneath the waters of your beautiful islands. And the situation is urgent and we need to act together and we need to act fast. In Europe and in the Netherlands, we are stepping up efforts to be at the forefront of climate change action reducing our carbon emissions and promoting climate justice internationally. And this also means ensuring representation, inclusion and protection of the rights of those most vulnerable to the effects of climate change, both at home and abroad. And the solutions that we must promote are equity, assure access to basic resources and assure that young people can grow up in healthy and clean environments. And that's all the more reason to meet here today and the upcoming days at the Caribbean Climate and Energy Conference. And I would like to thank uh, the government of Aruba and everyone in the organization that uh, you've been, done a wonderful job organizing this event in a very short notice, not only this day, uh, particularly for the Kingdom of the Netherlands, but also tomorrow, the International Day. 
And there's a huge task before us to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to increase the amount of sustainable energy that we generate. And this requires change from the government, from companies, and from people themselves. And additionally, it's a global problem that we cannot solve alone. We need to do this together within the kingdom and with other countries, and we need international agreements to make more progress. And much is needed to achieve the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement uh, so that we can slow down global warming and keep the one and off degree scenario alive. And that means changing our economies, making our energy supply more sustainable and increasing our energy efficiency. And we can do this by discouraging and, or prohibiting polluting behavior and encouraging sustainable behavior and sustainable options. And at the same time, we have access to natural resources so as, such as solar, wind and hydropower, which we can use to accelerate the transition to sustainable energy, but also more affordable energy. Yesterday, uh, two days ago, I visited on Bonaire, the new uh, solar plant. Uh, and the location for the new windmills. Not only good for a more green energy production on Bonaire, but also very important to cut the prices of the electricity bill on Bonaire. Last year, at the UN Climate Conference in Sharm el Sheikh, um, we highlighted the need for cooperation between small island states. And this is why I joined, on behalf of the Kingdom, the Small Island Development States Initiative. And to reach out climate goals, we need to cut the contribution of all small island states worldwide. And another reason for that is energy security, to ensure a sufficient supply of affordable fuel for all our citizens. Electricity prices on the islands are the highest in the kingdom. And it's also our aim to encourage and support local sustainability initiatives, including financially. We've already dedicated 33 million euros to uh, Bonaire, Seba and Stacia, and additional funds are available to stimulate innovations like floating solar panels. And Aruba, Curaçao and St. Martin as autonomous countries are obviously purchasing their own climate and energy policies. But we can and will work together. Last year I announced to sign a memorandum of understanding with Curaçao on the production, import and export of green hydrogen. And our joint efforts will benefit not only Curaçao, but will also benefit the Netherlands and the northwestern part of the EU that needs this green hydrogen from other parts of the world. But I'm very happy that I won't be signing just an MOU with Curaçao later this week when I'm visiting your beautiful island, but we're also signing the MOU with Aruba, speeding up the energy transition on Aruba and uh, making sure that we work together on this hydrogen value here, valley here on Aruba. And in the past few weeks, we've been working very hard together with the team from St. Martin so that we can also sign the MOU with St. Martin uh, later today to make sure that in all countries of the kingdom, we increase our cooperation to speed up this energy uh, transition. And I'm very serious as a Minister for Climate and Energy to uh, support all of you and work together with all of you on the development and implementation of island-specific policies for the energy transition. Because I firmly believe that if we do not cooperate, we will not have made our best efforts for future generations, but also not our best efforts for our citizens today that need these lower energy bills. So better cooperation on climate and energy policies between the Dutch government, your governments, and the OL base of Seba, Stacia, and Bonaire is just crucial and in our own interest. And it starts with better understanding of each other's challenges finding ways to collaborate strategically and in a meaningful way. And this is my message today to you. Let's have this fruitful discussion in the upcoming hours to see where we can help and support each other to do better for our citizens and do better for the climate. Because we have to take action now and we have to do it fast. But I'm quite confident that we can do it together. Thank you very much and enjoy this conference. Minister Rob Yetten.
Before we continue, we would like to thank the honorable members of Parliament of Aruba for their support and presence during the opening of the Caribbean Climate and Energy Conference. Before we continue to the roundtable discussions, we would like to inform you that coffee, tea and refreshments are available just outside his room. 